So this is a this is going to be a brief overview of the main use cases of Data Governance Edition. So Data Governance, it's a standalone edition of One Identity Manager. You can see here I am running the manager, and I have Data Governance uh, selected. So Data Governance is basically an agent server based architecture that allows you to scan resources on your servers, your file servers, your SharePoint, your NAS devices, et cetera, et cetera. Now the main use cases around that, once you have that data being collected is from an IT perspective, you can do access reporting. So I can do an account access report against a specific user, right? So here we go, here we go in the uh, security index, which is sent from the agents to the central server. So now I have all of the accounts here that I can start running some reports on. So here's my sister, Pam Green. And Pam Green, when she's selected, I have some options available here. I can run an account access report on her. And an account access report will basically tell me across all of my known managed hosts, across all my known file servers, SharePoint, NAS devices, etc. where does Pam have access? And not just where does she have access directly, but more commonly, where does she have access via her group membership, right? So here there's a, a wizard will, will allow you to select some options. I'm just going to quickly show you the results of an access report on my sister, Pam Green. And this will basically show you that yes, she has access to resources via her membership in some groups. So here's the account access report for Pam. You can see that Pam has access to resources, for example, she has access down here to the sister stuff resource, right? So she has folder access to that sister stuff folder, but her access is granted via her membership in the domain local group, Matt Sisters. Actually, Pam is a member of the global group, which is nested within the domain local group. So that provides Pam access to this resource. So she also gets access to things via her membership in domain users, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole bunch of things that this report can show you um, targeting a specific account. And the other options available to you are account activity. So DGE not only scans for uh, security, but it also collects activity. So watching file systems for things like security changes or file reads, file writes, things like that. And the, all that information is stored in a separate database called the DGE activity database. Account activity report will allow you to actually see that data. And we'll go finish. And here you go. You can see a summary of the activities in aggregated format where Pam has been accessing resources. And what I mean by aggregated is DGE stores activities in time spans from this date to this date, along with the number of with a, with a count of the activities, right? So this is really cool because you can actually see on a per account basis, what have they been doing, right? Assuming you have your managed hosts enabled for resource activity, and we support resource activity on the majority of the platforms that we support, you will actually be able to see what individual accounts have been doing. So that's really great. You can compare access. So I can find out where two accounts have similar or different access. So account comparison selected. I already have Pam as my source. And I'm going to go ahead and pick my other sister as the target here. Actually, my other sister has um, an alternate account. So let's pick that one. There it is. So both are my sisters, but one of my sisters has this alternate account. And I want to find out where the two of them have access. So I'm going to compare explicit and indirect. I'm not going to change any of the options here. By default, it's going to do the comparison against all hosts and all resource types. And let's go compare. And again, this is an access based report within the manager. It's just doing two access reports and then comparing the results, right? So it's doing the account access on Pam Green versus the account access on Jennifer Gillis, her alternate account. And once these queries are complete, it's going to perform the comparison. You can see that Pam and Jennifer 
have different access on these two folders. On one of them, Jennifer Gillis has access, but Pam doesn't. And on the other one, Pam has access, but the alternate Jennifer Gillis account doesn't. And again, you can export these results to CSV if you want. So account comparison, account simulation is what happens if I add or remove a user or group from another group, right? So I wanna understand what is the impact, for example, of adding Pam to a global finance group, right? So let's browse groups here and let's just type global finance. Check names. Here we go. We're going to pick this guy. We go OK. And then let's simulate. This is all simulation. What happens if I add this account to this group? And you can select multiple groups as well during this simulation. And this is going to tell you it's going to run access reporting on Pam to find out where she currently has access via what's going to happen with the access that she's going to be granted here. And here you go, here's the results. Obviously her membership in the global finance group is going to give her access to these sensitive folders here, right? You have the, the folder share, the finance folder share, and on this NetApp filer, right? I have multiple managed hosts. It's not just finding out where on any specific host, our choice was all hosts. And you can see that Pam is also gonna get access to some of these other shares here on this NetApp folder, including sensitive data named appropriately. There's probably something sensitive in there. So with this tool, you can see exactly where somebody is going to get access or where they're going to lose access. What happens if I remove Pam's membership in specific groups, right? So those are all some of the things in the manager you can do from the user perspective, but also from a resource perspective, we have the same sort of things in terms of access reporting um, and activity reporting, right? So here's the sister stuff uh, share right here. And we have resource access report and resource activity report. Both of these are very useful reports. Resource access is gonna show me not only the security of the target, but also down below, underneath in the subfolders, is there any resources that have deviated security, uh, explicit access control, block inheritance, etc. And expand groups. This will show you not just the security access control entries in the case where there's groups, but also it'll expand the members of those groups. So you'll be able to see exactly who has access. So not, you know, it might not be interesting that a global group has access, but who in the global group has access and you get it in all one report here. So you can see that Matico J Gillis and Matico M Muse and Matico P Green, all of these accounts have access, but it's not directly, it's via their membership in those domain local groups that are actually on the resource, right? And then also from the resource perspective, you have resource activity report. So again, account activity and resource activity you can generate these reports directly in the manager. And these reports are gonna to talk to the DGE service that then gets that data from its own DGE activity database. So here, focused on a resource, you can actually get a report and see an aggregated view of all of the accounts that have been accessing your resources. The accounts that DGE collect can be trimmed down. So if you're not interested in watching for reads or if you're not interested in writing for rights, then all of that information, all of that configuration is here on a managed host basis. So I can actually go to edit host settings and in the host settings, I can actually see and configure resource activity on a per host basis. And I can select specific actions that I'm interested in monitoring. So the complete customization, the complete con configuration of resource activity can be done here, which is great. So these are IT based functionality, right? So the typical access reporting, very comprehensive, finding out who has access to a resource and what does this specific account have access to, right? By collecting activity, and I've, I've just been talking about activity, is the last thing I wanna talk about here is the ability to calculate who should own the data. 
So data governance not only has this great set of features around access reporting from the IT perspective, but by calculating perceived owners, and there's this task right here on any resource that you can browse within the manager, I can find out who should be perceived owners. So here we can see some accounts that have been using the resource. Both of them are, are my sister here. You see Pam Green and Jennifer Gillis, and also the administrator who's assigned to the employee Clarence Muse, who is our father. But Pam Green here, she's been using a 28%. We already have a business owner set, so I'm not gonna go ahead and, and do that right now. But if I wanted to, I could change the owner to somebody else based on the activity that's being collected. And if you wanna select a longer time frame, you can say all the activity within the last year, last six months, etc. You can choose the date range in order to determine who those perceived business owners, because over the period of a year, maybe that calculation is different. But here, you can actually set who you want your perceived owners to be, right? Now, the whole calculation of perceived owners really leads us into governing data. So governing data, again, is a subset of your resources across all your managed hosts. These are those resources that need control. These are the resources that need ownership, policies to look after them, attestation, and also self-service. So being able to go to the web portal and request access to these resources that are out there, right? So in the manager, you can see a list of all the resources that we've specified to be governed. So that's great right here. You can actually pick a specific one. So I have this sister, sister stuff, right? And we're going to change the master data real quick just to show you. So this one happens to be available in the IT shop, which means other people can request access to it. We have a business owner specified who is my sister, Pam Green. An owner can be either an employee in one identity manager or an application role. So if I have role set up with one or more people within the role, then anybody in that role can be an owner, right? And the other thing I can do if it's in the IT shop, we might want to restrict access to that resource. So you can assign business roles or organizations, right? So assigning an organization, I might want to say that only people here in the Muse family are allowed to even see this resource in the IT shop. So with that restriction list set, and I can add restrictions by location and cost center, then depending on who's logged into the web portal, they may or may not see specific resources that are published. Really good if you have certain data that's only applicable to a specific department or location, then you can restrict the visibility of those resources in the IT shop. So this is all leading towards what does a business owner see? What does a business owner do in the web portal?